This video is brought to you by Alienware, featuring Intel Core i7 processors. Start gaming. Well, here it is, ladies and gentlemen, finally my review of the Alienware 15 laptop. I've been using this bad boy as pretty much my main driver for the best part of four weeks. I've been to a lot of events with this thing, really testing it on the road and really seeing what it's made of, and I'm thoroughly impressed with it. I've been playing games, writing scripts, editing and streaming countless YouTube and Netflix videos on it. I'm finally ready to give my verdict. But back to the laptop and straight into it. Let's talk about those specs. They've certainly crammed a lot in here. First of all, we have an Intel i7 4720HQ processor clocked at 2.6GHz and then boosts up to 36 when the task demands it. 16GB of 1600MHz RAM, which is plenty for the latest games on the market and for me, plenty for editing. An NVIDIA GTX 970M graphics card with 3GB of VRAM. A 240GB SSD for Windows and games partnered with a 1TB hard drive for all that extra file storage space. And finally, the cherry on the top, a 15-inch 4K monitor. Arguably one of the standout features of this laptop. And it's a touchscreen as well. So I wasn't lying when I said this thing was fully equipped. As I mentioned at the start, this thing can handle pretty much anything you can throw at it. Editing heavy workloads, the latest games and general tasks as well. It sort of fits everything you could possibly think of. Before I move on to the game reviews and benchmarks though, I want to mention two points that really stood out to me in terms of the laptop, and that is the screen and the battery, which are always two big points for any laptop on the market nowadays. The screen first, it is absolutely beautiful at 4K. I never thought I'd need 4K on such a small screen size, but the lack of visible pixels makes a massive difference when reading text on the screen and in-game if you're playing at 4K. It just looks staggering. But why tally a 4K screen with only a GTX 970M GPU, which does have 3GB of VRAM, but... It seems like a little bit of a strange choice as 4K has so many pixels, four times that of 1080p, to only equip the laptop with a GPU that's more suited to 1080p and 1440p performance. Don't get me wrong, the inclusion is one that I really appreciate for the points that I mentioned. It's great for watching videos and it really is just stunning to look at, but it might be a limiter when it comes to performance. And then the battery, and this is just to give you some idea of lifetime. I played Rocket League on this thing the other day, and Nvidia kicked in its power saving locking down the FPS mode. I was playing at 30 FPS with the screen slightly dimmed, but I was playing fully on battery, so no mains power, and we survived around 80 minutes or so, which I didn't think was too bad, but... To be honest, when are you ever going to game on a laptop when it's not plugged in? We know that the battery is never really going to be that great, but when it is plugged into the wall, it's absolutely perfect. I could barely tell the difference between this PC's performance and my main PC's performance. For normal web browsing and just standard PC use, the battery's good for about 5 hours though. Okay then, on to some games, and first up we have Battlefield 4, and I've got V-Sync switched off here, so the frame counter on the screen will be an accurate representation of what you can expect. I'm playing here at 1080p, not 4K, even though the monitor does support 4K. Like I said, it is a bit of a limiter on performance when it comes to games, and I found just playing at standard 1080p looked good enough anyway, and I got a better frame rate overall just felt better for me. And as you can see, frame rates are absolutely amazing. Anywhere between sort of 55 and 100 FPS is totally acceptable. Pretty much anything above 60 is what I expect, and I got that here. It really, really does look quite beautiful. In terms of the touchscreen, I don't know why it was included until 
I started using it when I was going to bed at night. I used to use like a tablet in bed, but I thought, you know what? I'm going to really give this thing a go. So I was sitting in bed the other night using the touchscreen. And you don't realize how nice it is to use a touchscreen on a laptop. You don't have to use your little T-Rex hands to touch the click pad anymore. You can just use your finger on the screen. So even though it's not that great for games, it kind of helps out in other situations. And now, Crisis 3. This was going to be the biggest test for my laptop, even more so than editing stuff, because of course you can see a visual representation of what your PC is actually doing. And, well, I was very happy with the performance. Now, a lot of people have been stating in the comments of some of my other sponsored videos this month that gaming laptops might not really be worth it, but I have a little bit of an issue with that because I really think it depends on your life situation and how you want to play your games. If you're someone like me who travels a lot, then it's really great to have a powerful system in your bag to work with at a moment's notice. Travelling all the way around the world to San Francisco or just into London to a capture event are times where this laptop comes in really, really handy. I can edit on the go or back in my hotel room. I can also hook this thing up to a capture device for console games and use it to record the footage directly to the laptop rather than having to use an external source, which trust me, when you go to some of these events, it can be an absolute nightmare. Gaming laptops are also very, very helpful if you don't have a lot of space in the house that you live in, or they can complement a much bigger setup as well. When my main PC is doing rendering now, I tend to be on my laptop doing other things like replying to comments, maybe making some thumbnails, or even editing another video. So if you do have a big setup at home, and you're using it all the time, or you're making videos, or doing something that requires you to use all of the PC's power, having a gaming laptop which is just as powerful is really, really helpful. So there you have it, the Alienware 15, a pretty decent bit of kit. If you want to learn more about the laptop, prices and a full spec list can be found by heading through the link in the description to the Alienware website, where you can check out their other products as well. I do want to say a massive thank you to Alienware for sponsoring this video and the four others during this month. And as I mentioned, it's been an amazing opportunity for me and some videos this month wouldn't have been possible without them. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Leave me some comments down below. Let me know what you think of gaming laptops. Have you got one? Maybe tell me what your gaming setup actually is. And while you're down there, leave me a thumbs up too. But until next time, my name is Westy. And I'll catch you guys in the next video.